Hi, this is Ed. I hope you all are having a great day today. And I want to wish all you dads out there a happy Father's Day today. Hope you're having a blessed day and, and a great time uh, with your loved ones. Uh, today I have a very interesting message to bring. Actually, the Lord shared this with me this morning. He, he wanted me to do a message on this passage of Scripture and it's found in the book of First Kings. This passage deals with a prophet. And uh, at first, this prophet was obedient to God. But as we'll see, then he was disobedient and he suffered greatly for his act of disobedience. And in fact, it cost him his life. And there's much we can learn from this story. And I'm just mainly going to be focusing on a couple of aspects of it. So uh, let's get started. And we're reading from 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 1 through 24. And I'm going to be reading in the ESV today because I have that particular version highlighted. And behold, a man of God came out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel. Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make offerings. And the man cried against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord God, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice on you the priest of the high places who make offerings on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign this, the same day, saying, This is a sign that the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be torn down and the ashes that are on it be poured out. And when the king heard the saying of the man of God, when he cried against the altar at Bethel, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Season, and his hand, which he stretched out against him, dried up, so that he could not draw it back to himself. The altar was also torn down, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign that the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king said to the man of God, Entreat now the favor of the Lord your God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me. And the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and became as it was before. And the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a, a reward. And the man of God said to the king, If you give me half your house, I will not go in with you. I, and I will not eat bread or drink, drink water in this place, for so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall neither eat bread nor drink water nor return by the way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet lived in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also had told to their father the words, that he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, Which way did he go? And his son showed him the way that the man of God who came from Judah had gone. And he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him and mounted it. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Are you the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with you or go in with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, You shall neither eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by the way that you came. And he said to him, I also am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you into your house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. And as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried to the man of God who came from Judah, Thus saith the Lord, Because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord, and have not kept the command that the Lord your God commanded you, but have come back and eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which he said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your body shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. 
And after he had eaten bread and drunk and saddled the donkey for the prophet whom he had brought back, and as he went away, a lion met him on the road and killed him, and his body was thrown into the road, and the donkey stood beside it. The lion also stood beside the body. Uh, you can read the rest of the passage for yourselves. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of it for, for time's sake, but uh, it, it's very interesting passage of scripture that we have here and there, there's two prophets in fact involved here all the, the main focus is on the one that, that came from judah but this old prophet that, that dwelt at bethel and he was still called a prophet so evidently he at some point in time he may have been a true prophet of god but he had turned to wickedness for he lied to this prophet from judah and one but wonders why this prophet who lied wasn't judged immediately. But the one who came from Judah, who at first was obedient, but then in this one act of disobedience, it cost him his life. One wonders why, you know, he, he was judged so severely and so quickly, whereas the other one seemed to get off without being punished at all. But be sure your sins will find you out. And if, if you sin and, and judgment doesn't come right away, and you continue in your sin without repenting of your sin, eventually you will be judged for it. Uh, so again, there, there is a lot we can learn from this story. I'm going to share some comments that I have uh, on this story with you all. Uh, verses 1 through 10. The prophet warns King Jeroboam that his altar will be torn down. Jeroboam was about to dedicate his altar and make offerings to his false gods. He worshipped all these, these different gods and not the true God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When he stretched out his hand against the prophet, it immediately withered. And instead of trembling at the message from God through the prophet, he sought to strike the prophet. He asked that his hand would be restored, which God did through the prophet's prayer. But the thing here is, is the king's heart wasn't changed. He only wanted healing for his hand and neglected the more important healing of his soul. He sought not that his sins would be taken from him, but only that his hand would be healed. God forbade the prophet to eat or drink in Bethel because of the idolatry and apostasy there. And this teaches us not to partake in works of darkness. God also told the prophet not to go back the way he came to avoid being distracted or tempted, tempted by the wickedness in Bethel. The prophet rightly refused the king's invitation to eat and also be given a reward. You know, it sound, sounds like some, something that the flesh would definitely want to do, uh, both eat and get a reward. But again, he was obedient to, it, it, you know, to the, the king's call for him to come to eat. He would not do so. And uh, then he departs to Bethel on a different route. One note to mention here, something to keep in mind is that those who have not learned self-denial, they, they have not learned self-denial if they cannot forsake a, a forbidden meal. You know, if, if we partake in things of the flesh over doing what the will of God is, we have not truly learned self-denial. And I'm sure we all could get better at that. It's not, none of us are perfect. Uh, now, 11, verses 11 through 24. The old prophet in Bethel was wicked and lied to the prophet from Judah, telling him that an angel told him that the prophet should come and eat with him. False prophets have always been the worst enemies of true prophets, and the same is true today. The prophet from Judah should have known that God never contradicts 
his word. He ate with the other prophet who then pronounced the true judgment against him for disobeying God. So even though this prophet in this old prophet in, in uh, Bethel seemed to be wicked because he had lied to the other prophet, the Lord still spoke through him. The Lord can still speak through people even if, if they're not doing his will if he chooses to do so. But often he does not. You know, often if we forsake his will, then he just lets us go our way. And, and uh, hopefully, if we stray away, then we, that we shall come back to the Lord and not stay strayed away from him and his will. The prophet from Judah was killed by a lion. But the, but the prophet who lied to him, again, received no immediate judgment. All will have to answer for their sins on Judgment Day. There is a Judgment Day coming for all. And we will all have to answer to the Lord for our sins. And it, particularly if, if our sins haven't been washed in His blood. If we have not received forgiveness for our sins. Then will we, have, we will have no excuse or to give to the Lord that will be acceptable for sin. The lion was but directed by God to kill the prophet, for he did not eat his body or kill the donkey. And lions usually eat their prey. So that this is a way you can know it's not just a coincidence, a lion or you know, happenstance that the lion came and, and killed this prophet. It it was something ordained by God. And and he also forbade the lion to eat his body. Or strike the donkey. Two of the main lessons to learn here is number one, if God tells you something, do not let anyone deceive you into believing a lie or going against what he tells you to do. And I can recall that there's an in instance of Saul too uh, when the Lord told Saul to go, uh, King Saul I'm talking about, not Saul of Tarsus, but um, he had told him to, to kill all these particular groups of, of people that they were going against in battle, and, and even the animals, and, and he kept some of the best animals for himself, and he didn't kill the king, and then Samuel had to come and finish the job and that Saul didn't do. You know, Saul was obedient to him in some things up to that point, but he also was disobedient. And Saul, the one of the last things recorded about him in the scriptures is that, that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And it is not recorded that the Spirit of God ever returned to him. So Saul likely perished in his sins. So it's a very serious thing, disobedience. And again, although we're not perfect, we need to do our best to strive to be obedient at all times to the Lord. For that, that is the second lesson here. You know, because one act of disobedience costs the prophet his life. And obedience is always better than sacrifice. We need to strive to do the will of God as much as possible and to not be distracted. And again, do not let others deceive you. And one way to know for sure if you've heard from the Lord about something is it will agree with the scriptures. It will not contradict the scriptures. If it does contradict the scriptures, then it's not of God. So there's so much deception going on today. We need to be watchful that we are not led astray and the Holy Spirit will help keep us on the right path we need but ask him to show us the truth and he sure certainly will so God bless you all thanks for watching and until next time keep looking up bye bye